السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره Brothers and sisters and esteemed guests This worldly life that we are living inside of As believers we know that everything is very temporary Worldly feelings are replaces happiness We see this at every moment of our lives the feeling of safety and security sometimes replaces fear and insecurity you know changes the latter to former itself and the hereafter that we believe as believers is something on the other hand which is eternal everything in this world is meant to change the holy quran cites wa tilka al-ayyam nudawiluha bayna nas that this world is meant to change for people the day may be the happiest day of your life may turn to become one of the saddest days. And a sad day of a person's life may change into a day of happiness because of a good news. And this is what this world is all about. Continuous changes. But as believers, we all know that the eternal life of the hereafter is forever. The bliss and the contentment that will remain with an individual can never be taken away from them. The success and comfort that remains with an individual in the hereafter will never be taken away from them. And on the contrary, an individual for whom awaits sorrows and difficulty, nothing will also remove that from them as well. But sometimes when we are threatened in life, when there is fear and difficulty and fear, usually we anticipate these things around us as believers, what are some of the things that we need to do? As we know from the last whole week, the horrific accidents that happened and changed the lives of so many people and turns the vision and focus of so many individuals, I really want ourselves as a congregation, as a community, to move forward and heal and find solution for a better society. For that reason, I want to share with you something so close to me from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I had prepared so many things to share. The lack of time and so many things I won't be able to, but I want to share with you one important thing that I want all of us to take back from this khutbah and Friday sermon. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, entered inside the city of Medina. He was born in Mecca, he lived there for 40 years, he was known as as sadiqan al Amin the most trustworthy and truthful individual. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, announced his prophecy, the same individuals who trusted him, who loved him and cared for him so much, became his greatest enemies. They were the ones who were the pagans of their time. They disliked the talk of one God. Trustworthy began to plan his assassination and take his life. He finally moved from Mecca and he migrated towards Medina. The city where he lived for the next 10 years of his life and he passed away and he's buried. When he entered the city of Medina, and this was his first ever sermon that he gave to all the people of Medina, this is the sermon that I want to share with you. This sermon has only five things inside of it. But something that I think that all of us can practice and bring inside of our lives to heal and be- become better individuals. People who will give betterment to society and community. So what were the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and I share with you quickly. He said, the first words in Arabic, he said, Afshu salam. And the literal meaning of the word Afshu salam means spread salam. And the word salam means peace and blessings. But one thing that I really want all of us to take back, and especially our guests who are with us, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind. He didn't say, O Muslims, when he's giving a sermon. He said, Ya ayyuhan nas, afshu salam. O mankind, spread peace. And the word peace doesn't only mean to say, but the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, contains two important factors. The number one thing was to spread the greetings of salam. When you meet one another, yes, say salam and blessings and greet one another. But not only that, but to spread the peace within the community that you are living in. 
He's speaking to a group of individuals who are only 10 to 20% Muslims. That, that is his first sermon that is delivering there. And of course, spreading of the greeting of salam, brothers and sisters, and, and we internalize the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that the word assalamu alaikum does not only mean may, may the peace be upon you, but it also means may no harm ever befall you. When you are saying peace be upon you, may constant in goodness, you are saying may no discomfort ever reach your life. You are saying all of these things to another individual. And not only this, if someone is genuinely telling someone that peace and blessings be upon you, then how can they themselves become a means of afflicting others with difficulty? When you yourself are genuinely saying, peace be upon you, then you will be the reason of healing the society rather than corrupting the society. So the first message that the Prophet peace not only to the Muslims, but to everyone, and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, and the word anas in, in Arabic, referring to English means, O oh mankind, spread peace. Which means, become the means of ease and comfort in the lives of others. And not only this, the second thing he mentioned, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامُ And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامُ And feed the poor. And what does it mean to feed the poor? Not only to give someone something to eat, but as, as a Muslims, uh, it didn't say feed the Muslim poor, you know, orphan Muslims and orphan people. No, it said because poverty and hunger is not a Muslim problem, it is a human problem. Become the solution to human problems. Become a reason to solve the issues of the lives of others. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking on this content, and I know the wounds that we had faced last week are still very fresh upon us, but we need to move forward and heal those and see how we can become a means of better society. How we can create the true spirit of faith in the lives of individuals. How each and every one of us can contribute to becoming better individuals and better society that we live in. Seeing so many people standing outside of different faiths and cultures and ethnicities, standing side to side, well, you know, wallahi, that sometimes the most difficult situations bring us correct together, but we ask the Lord Almighty to always bring us together. Join our hearts towards those which are goodness. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to these individuals, وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ Feed individuals, not only Muslims who are poor and orphans, it is a society that is suffering, provide for them as Muslims in the West. And I speak to this congregation because our Friday sermons are more spiritual lessons to take back, brothers and sisters. As Muslims that we live in the West, we have isolated ourselves. We go to our works, we go to our mosques and our prayer centers and we come back. And we have isolated ourselves. We have not made this place as homes. These, this is a place where we are raising our generations, our children. We cannot be separated. We cannot be isolated. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was given the revelation of prayer, the obligation of hajj and fasting, ten years after he was given the revelation of having good conducts with individual. The revelation, the Qur'an began, and after ten years, the prayers began. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we don't have to pray and we don't have to come to our centers. We have to pray. We have to fulfill the obligations of our Lord, oh Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we also make sure that the society that we are living in change the lives of those individuals. And of course, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامُ Feed others. The third thing the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned. So the first thing he mentioned, أَبْشُ salam, Spread salam and peace. Number two thing he said, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامُ Feed others. Become individuals who become the, the reasons of betterment of others. I read somewhere, they said, if, if you take the food and eat it yourself, you may have a comfortable sleep with your belly filled. But if you provide someone else and may not have a full belly, your heart will be content that night. You might have taken a little bit less, but your heart will be at comfort that night that you gave someone else. So the second thing he said, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامُ Give others. Become a part of society. Don't isolate yourself, brothers and sisters. Become a part that you are providing and giving back. Third thing he said, وَصِلُ arham And join kinship and relationship. Don't break ties. Don't break relationships. 
I've said this previously so many times within my own congregation. When our kids are young, being a father of a six, four, and three year old, I see this every day. Our kids, brothers and sisters, as they are to themselves, they fight ten times a day. And the next day, they are still brothers and sisters. Because they are kids. Brother and sister is not willing to talk to one another. For months and days and sometimes years, we cut relationship with our loved ones. So the third thing he said, وَصِّلُوا arham, Join your kinship, your relationship. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, two footsteps that are the most beloved to God, Lord Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the footsteps that you take towards prayer and the footstep that you go to take and reconcile your issues with others. You go and tell someone, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm okay with you. There's no issues. The happiness and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you receive at that time. So after mentioning these three responsibilities, three hukuk, spread peace, feed others, join your blood relationship, the fourth thing he said was, was sallu bil wa nasuniyam, and pray in the middle of night while everyone is asleep. Meaning, be sincere in your worship. For whatever you do, create sincerity. Sitting here, be sincere. Going for hajj, be sincere. Fasting for 16, 17 hours, be sincere. You're giving your charity, be sincere. For there is no one who can give you the reward except for our Creator. There's no one who can give you the true praise except for your Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For everything that I mentioned in this beginning is very temporary. The praise of individuals and people is very temporary. For the thing that will remain forever is the actions that we have done with sincerity. So the last aspect that he mentioned to his congregation was, وَالسَّلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُنِيَامِ That pray in the middle of night while everyone is asleep. Be the one that connects themselves with their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect them with, with spirituality. And the fifth thing he mentioned to them was, وَدُخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ and enter Jannah paradise with ease and comfort. If you want to enter Jannah, if you want to enter paradise with ease and comfort, he said four things, and the fifth is your result. Spread peace, afshu salam, spread salam. And that does not only mean to say someone's salam, or assalamu alaikum, but it also means that I will do my best that no harm comes to you. I will do my best that no problem ever afflicts your life. I will do my best to protect you comfortable. I said salam to those. I said peace to those. But brothers and sisters, when we say salam, we mean it from our hearts. That we stand for one another. That I will be with you in the times of your discomfort. I will be there to make sure that nothing of harmful ever happens to you. As I myself with these four things to take back. Spread salam. وَأَطْئِمُ taham. Provide others. Give others. Be a reasons for the better society. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Khairun Nas. He didn't say Khairul Muslim, the best of Muslim. He said Khairun Nas, the best of the humanity. Who is the, that individual? Mayan Fa'un Nas. The one who is the most beneficial for humanity. The words of the Prophet, by doing for others. And who is this crowd who is being told to feed? They are people who can't even get food once a day. He's speaking to his congregants in Medina who have left everything in Mecca. They have left their homes and their families and their wealth and they barely have food to eat every day and they are being told, وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامِ And teaching us a lesson rather than sitting upon our wealth and our happiness, share that with others. Share your happiness with others. And, when, you know, and, and I, I'm sorry to even bring up this topic because I want to talk about healing but when I went through those 87 pages that a person had written that I won't even mention the name of, upon, one of the things that I extra extracted from those words was that there's lack of humanity in the lives of people. People are missing that aspect. Someone cares for them. When they feel that they're alone, as true Muslims, brothers and sisters, make everyone feel comfortable around you. As Muslims, as, as I speak to my congregations, and I tell you all the time, reach out to your neighbors. Go to them, ask their, about their children, ask about their kids, become a part, do not isolate yourself anymore. Do not become that isolated group of individuals who are Muslims and that, no, become a part of that society. Number three, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned, وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ Your relationship with others. 
Your ties with others, your connections and relationship with others should be growing every single day. And last but not least, make sure that you are sincere in whatever you do. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ For indeed, when you pray in the middle of night, when no one is watching, and you're shedding these tears in front of your Lord, that doesn't make you weak, it makes you stronger. It makes you a better believer, knowing that you are dependent upon the Almighty, that you need something from Him. And last but not least, he mentioned, you enter with Jannah with ease and comfort. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord Almighty, to give us strength and peace and comfort in our lives. For those brothers and sisters whose lives that have been lost in this tragic incident last week, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest of the places in, in paradise in Jannah al Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sabr and patience and ease and comfort to the family of those that had their children, many elderly men and women, many individuals with so much goals and visions in front of their lives. But indeed, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows us more than we know our own selves. We know, he knows us more than we know our own self. For indeed, He is Al-Muhaymin, the protector. For indeed, He is Al-Qadir, the one who writes our destiny. For indeed, our loyalty is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, our tawakkul and reliance is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, our supplications, invocation and dua is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah for safety for all of us and all of the brothers and sisters who are here and everywhere across the globe. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to never put us in trying and testing times and allow us to strengthen our faith at all moments of our lives. And we are thankful for our brothers and sisters and our government officials from all different faiths and walks of life who have gathered here to stand with us. You are truly appreciated and every single moment of your time is truly appreciated. And, and we really, really appreciate your time and your, 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 your solidarity and in your unity with us. May God bless all of you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us and accept our generations for Iman and Islam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa ma'alayna illa al balagh. Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الحمد لله علي ذات عظيم الصفات السميع السمات كبير الشأن جليل القدر رفيع الذكر مطاء الأمر جليل البرهان فخيم الاسم غزيل الإلم وسيل حلم كثير الغفران جميل السناء جزيل الأطاء مجيب الدعاء أميم الأحسان سليل حسابي شديد اللقاب أليم الأذاب يزيد السلطان ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى الأسود والأحمر المنوط بشرح الصدر ورفي الذكر وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين هم خلاصة الأرب الأربا وخير الخلائك بعد الأنبياء أما بعد فيا أيها الناس وحد الله فإن التوحيد رسول تعات واتقوا الله فإن التقوى ملات الحسنات وعليكم بالسنة 
فإن السنة تهدي إلى الإطاعة ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وإياكم والبدعة فإن البدعة تهدي إلى المعصية ومن يعصي الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى وعليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق ينجي والكذب يهلك وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين ولا تقنتوا من رحمة الله فإنه أرحم الراحمين حتى تستقمن رزقها فاتقوا الله وأجمنوا في الطلب وتوكل عليه فإن الله يحب المتوكلين ودعوه فإن ربكم مجيب الداعين واستق فروه يمددكم بأموال وبنين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فانه لا يضر الى نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عبدك ورسوله وصلي على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد وازواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحم امتي بامتي ابو بكر وشط سيده النساء اهل الجنه وحمد اسد الله واسد رسوله رضوان الله تعالى عليهم اجمعين اللهم اغفر للعباس ولديه مغفره ظاهره وباطنه لا تغادر ذنبا تخذوهم من بعد غرضا فمن احبهم فبحبي احبهم ومن ابغضهم فببغضي ابغضهم ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى اعلى وجل وتمو اكبر في شيء lines please fill up the gaps <clears throat>